Hello, everybody. Hello, how are you today? I normally play a little music here, but I really kind of just want to start out and say, go on to your phones. Go on to your phones. If you're watching me on your television, go on to your phone. Text HGMBC to the number 54244. Download our new app. Become a part of our church family. Uh, the plan of salvation is there for you. If you want to be saved, go to God right now because he is available to you. Yes, he is. Uh, I'm excited about our new church app. Share it with your friends. Holy Grove, help me get the word out so that we can continue to reach as many people as we possibly can. Um, I want to thank all of you for all of your support. We are getting ready to jump right in. My Wi-Fi has not been working too good, so I'm going to get in where I fit in and not prolong the time, if that's all right. Hey, man, somebody, turn your Bibles, turn your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3, and we're going to kind of close out on that verse number 12. And then we're going to jump right in and do verses 13 through 17, 13 through 17, Colossians chapter three, and we're going to do uh, verses 13. We're going to try to get down to 17, well, 12 to 17, I should say, since we're going to, we didn't close out chapter 12. I like the way Warren Weezer be coins and he says all dressed up and some place to go. Amen, somebody. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for another day's journey. We bless you and give your name glory. Lord, you've been good to us. Lord, you keep on making ways for us. You keep on moving things out of the way so that we can continue to move forward. Lord, I pray right now that you open our hearts and our minds up to receive your word. Help us, O oh God, be all that we can be in you. Bless us. Bless each and every person that is listening now and each and everybody that will listen afterward. Touch us all, O oh God. Bless those who are in sick, sickness, those who are still suffering from COVID-19. Bless those families who are quarantined away from their loved ones, those who are in bereavement. God, we ask you right now to lift up a bow down hand and lay your healing hands on those that are sick. This is your servant's prayer, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Let all the church of God say amen. Coming out of that rain, you see those raindrops on me. <laughs> God's been good, though. The rain keeps our vegetation tight. Amen, amen. We're in Colossians chapter 3. Verse number 12 is kind of where we closed out last week. And uh, it says, it says, uh, it says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. I want, I, want to, I want to look at that and I want to kind of break down just a couple of these words. We talked about what holy was last week, remember? We said holy was, was simply li living a clean life. Amen. Holy is, holiness is living, uh, is treating your neighbor right. Amen. That's holiness. Holiness is, is not some, uh, uh, some achievement that you, that you have in the flesh that you're attaining to be. Amen. That, that's, holiness is living a life that pleases the Lord. Amen. Uh, because uh, Jesus left us two commandments. And these two commandments, he says, are all of the laws that are written. There's over 630 something laws in the Old Testament. And all of them are fulfilled in these two. Loving God with everything you got. Heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. And then loving your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Uh, uh, touch not, taste not, 
handle not is what we saw in chapter two, remember? Uh, we saw that in chapter two, stay away from all of the messiness and live before God in holiness. Live a clean life before the Lord, amen? So we see uh, holy and beloved. And then we didn't break this down last week, but we, we, want, we want to break it down. Uh, bowels of mercies, right? That holy and beloved is, if you notice, holy and beloved is together. Let me, let me, let me, before I move to bowels of mercies, it means to be welcoming, to entertain, uh, uh, to love dearly of things, to be well pleased, to be content with a thing. So, uh, holy and beloved deals with a peaceful life. Mm, that is so good. All right, then you got bowels of bowels of mercies. Bowels of mercies, right? Uh, bowels kind of dealt with, um, it really in the text, if you look at it from the Greek text, it, it deals with your inner, your intestines, your heart, lungs, liver. But what it really deals with is the seat of your affection, the seat of your uh, uh, benevolence, the seat of your uh, compassion. That's what bowels really kind of deals with. So that part of you, and we know what mercy is, right? Bowels of mercies. So from your heart, from your heart, amen, somebody, is how we ought to display our holiness. Compassion. Uh, bowels with, in which compassion resides, a heart of compassion. Uh, uh, the Greek set text kind of gives you sort of manifestation of pity, but it's not dealing with being pitiful. Amen. It's, it's dealing with being merciful. All right. All right. Uh, kindness. We know what kindness is. Humbleness of mind. Um, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time. When it deals with humbleness, it's actually dealing how with how you humble yourself. Amen. Uh a man, or, a man or a woman ought not to think of themselves more highly than they ought. Amen. <laughs> Be humble. Humbleness of mind. That's where it starts. Meekness. Um, meekness is not weakness. Meekness actually means, when we literally put it in context and in the text, it means having strength under control. Strength under control. I remember, I remember, uh, 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 not, not Giles, Osmond Fisher, Osmond Fisher. We played in the trombone section together at Central State University. And uh, uh, he was, he was really a, a meek kind of brother, right? Uh, wasn't a tall stature, but boy, he could really go at it. He could scrap. You know what I mean? He was a, you know, really, really strong brother. And it was this one freshman that kept giving him the blues. You know, he was probably maybe his sophomore, junior year in college. And it was this one freshman that kept giving him the blues that came in our section. And he thought he was all this. And, and, and Osmond had to tell him, listen, man, I can whoop your behind, but I'm not going to do that because you won't learn the parts of this, of this song. He says, but I want you to know that I can. <laughs> right? He made him so mad that he called out of his shell and said, listen, I can tear you up if I want to, but I want you to learn. That is meekness. It was something that he could have done, something that he could have done out of anger and strife, but he controlled himself because he wanted to reach a goal with that young brother. Mm, that's meekness. Long suffering. Now, when you're dealing with long suffering, it means patience for a long period of time. When you're under pressure, amen, uh, uh, another good word for it is forbearance, right? Uh, that means like, say for instance, you've owed a debt for a long time and, they, and what happens is uh, from the date that you owed it into the date the day is, they forbear that. That means they forgive you for all of the time you owed it before. That's really kind of what it is when you're dealing with forbearance. And that's what it means in the text. 
be long suffering to other people. Look at what it says. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. This is how we treat one another. Watch what it says. Forbearing one another uh, and forgiving one another. Listen, listen, saints. It is very difficult to have a forgiving heart when you hold a grudge. Amen. And holding a grudge doesn't, doesn't bother the person that you're holding the grudge with. Holding the grudge actually keeps you locked up. So you must forgive to free yourself. Amen, somebody. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So, you remember when that disciple came to Jesus and he says to him, well, how often should I forgive? I mean, this dude keep messing up. This woman keep messing up. They keep, well, listen, you and I keep messing up. And God keeps waking us up in the morning. Where there is opportunity to forgive, you make sure you forgive. We have to forgive. Because we are a people of reconciliation. Amen, somebody. All right. So since the grace of God, since we're chosen and we're elected by God, we ought to put on these godly things. Amen. Uh, uh, and since God has forgiven us, we ought to forgive other people. All right. God's forgiveness is complete and final. It is not conditional or partial. How is the holy God able to forgive us guilty sinners? Because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, God has forgiven us for Christ's sake and not our own sake. So why should you forgive? For the same reason Christ forgave you. Amen, somebody. And be kind to one another, Ephesians 4 and 32. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Amen. So we have been set apart to do what all of this adds up to. It's called grace. Amen. All of, all of it really, 12 to 14, and above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. All of these things are summed up in saying grace. Mm, not the grace you say over your food. Mm -mm. The grace that you give to other people. <laughs> Amen, somebody. All right. Now, because of these gracious blessings, the Christian has some solemn responsibility before God. He must put on the beautiful graces of the Christian life. Um, Paul named eight of them in this particular passage, right? Name eight of them. So we just went through them. So we're not going to we're not going to rehash them. We're going to move on. But I want you to know uh, as we as we get into fourteen, it says above all these things, put on charity. Above all these things, it says put on charity. Now this is not this is not this is not. This is not the charity. Uh, my children are coming in being loud. That's all right. This is not the charity that you have like a charitable organization. No, this is actually uh, a, a love, a brotherly uh, love feast. It, it's, it's, it's affection. It's goodwill. Uh, you see it sometimes as agape, right? And in spite of love, but in this context, it's dealing with how we deal with other people. So it would be more so the benevolent love that we give to somebody else in in, in, a, in such a manner, or the brotherly love that we give to each one another, our sisterly love. Amen. Somebody, it's not the erotic erotica love. It's the kind of love we share towards one another. 
and it says that that above all of these things put on love why because love is the engine that allows you to do all of those other things just like covetousness is the engine to allow you to act like you used to act amen no notice notice if we back up he says he says uh uh Mortify, therefore, your members, verse number five, uh, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. See, covetousness opens the gate to all of those sins. But if you go down to where we are in 14, love, charity opens the gate to do all of those other things. Why? Because love is the engine to all of it. Because Christ so loved us, it started with his love for us that he even died for us, that he even forgives us. He does it because he loves us. Oh, that's good, saints. Above all these things, put on charity, charity, which is the bond of perfectness, the bond of perfectness. And, and I like I like the way that Paul puts it because in, in the days uh, back back uh, in these Gnosticism days, uh, they thought that perfectness was attaining to a certain level of knowledge. But in the text, it teaches us that loving your brother and your sister is the bond of perfectness, a state of perfection, a state of uh, of the more intelligent moral and spiritual perfection only deals with the love we share towards one another. Oh my God, that is so great. So we ought not be how we used to be. We ought to be a people of peace, reconciliation, forgiveness, forbearance, love, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, meekness, humbleness of mind. He, he breaks it down for us, right? And we have to put these things on because that's the way Christ treats us. Not only the way he treated us before Calvary, it's the way he treats us now. Amen, somebody? Amen. It is Christ-like to forgive. It's Christ-like to forgive. And so, love is the most important of Christian virtue and it acts like a girdle that ties all the other virtues together. All of the other spiritual qualities Paul has named are aspects of true Christian love as a reading of 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, you know how I give the, the, that's the love chapter, right? Love is not a puffed up, right? Without charity, I have nothing, amen. <laughs> So love is patient, love is kind, or all of that. You remember that? Go back and read it. It's really good. Love is the first fruit of the spirit, and the other virtues follow. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, and meekness. All of those follow love. That's why I told you it starts with love. When love rules our lives, it unites all these spiritual virtues so that there is beauty and harmony indicating spiritual maturity. See, the evidence that you and I are saved is not some act that you perform in your speech. Amen? The evidence that you and I are saved is by the way we love people. Hmm. This harmony and maturity uh, uh, keep the life balanced and growing. A Gnostic system could never do this. A line of rules could never do this. The law of Moses could never do this. That's why when we come on the scene as Christians, we are not only loving, we are peacemakers. We have joy in our hearts. You shouldn't be walking around as no Christian with your head down about, oh, woe is me. You know how some people you just hate to see coming. Because all they got to tell you is the pills they taking, how bad they feeling, and how bad they make you feel when they come around. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Watch this. Watch this. We're going on. Verse number 15 says, 
and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be thankful. So now he turns from our character, what we are on the inside, to our conduct from 15 or in verse 15. Huh? How can a Christian know when he's doing God's will? One answer is the peace of Christ is in the heart and in the church. When the believer loses his inner peace, he knows that he has in some way disobeyed God. And you know, there's a lot of people that don't have any peace, don't have any joy. Those people that are bitter, those people that are that are mean, those people that are rough all the time around the edges, it ain't because of you, it's because of them. I know people like that. I know people in church, been in church 40, 50 years that are bitter, mean, evil, I mean an abrasive. And it ain't got nothing to do with you and me. It got everything to do with what's going on in their own hearts. See, because he moves from character to conduct. Your conduct will tell on you. Amen, somebody. So he says, since we are called to one body, be thankful. Uh, the word in here, it says, let, let, and, and let the peace of God rule. It's an athletic term. It means to preside at the games and distribute the prizes. Oh, 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 oh. Ain't that something? When people run into you and I, they ought to feel like they're receiving a gift because they bumped into us. Paul used a variation of this word in this letter to the Colossians. Let no one declare you unworthy of a prize. Now, in the Greek games, there were judges. Uh, we would call them umpires who reject the contestants who were not qualified and who, disqual and dis and who disqualified those who broke the rules. The peace of God is the umpire uh, in our believing hearts and our churches. Where we obey the will of God, we have his peace within. But when we step out of his will, even unintentionally, we lose his peace. Weasley puts that good. When people come into the church, they should not only feel, they should not only be treated well, kindness and tenderhearted. They should also feel the love of Christ come from us. Amen. Some people are so enamored by the building structure that they forget the people that's in it. <laughs> Amen, somebody. We must beware, however, of false peace in the heart. Amen. False peace is, is when we fake it. Amen. God, God, God wants us to have this love. That is, that is able to be felt by others, right? Right? So, and then it says, as we move on, uh, rule in your hearts to which you are also called in one body and be thankful. I, I want to deal with this thankful and I promise you I'm moving on. We got to move on. I don't want to run too far on time. I'm going to do about a half hour today. You ought to thank God in everything. And thank God even in front of others. Stop looking at the negative. Thank God for the relationship that you have with other folk. I was listening to uh, I was listening to a preacher, and he said when he was younger, and I kind of feel like that too. He thanked God for for uh, the things that he had, you know. Material things, and, and you know, as he got a little older, he would thank God for the provision, for the money, right? And then, as he got older in his older age, he started thanking God for the people that was in his life, and I feel like that too. I thank God for the people that God allows me to enjoy, because as a pastor, Doing funerals is part of our business. Doing home-going services and funerals are, is part of our business. So we learn over time to appreciate those folk that God places in our lives to keep us going on. I appreciate every prayer. 
And you ought to appreciate every prayer. Let's move. Let's move. Be thankful is what I'm trying to say. Amen. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. This means, of course, the word of God. The false teachers came to Colossae with made traditions, religious rules, human philosophy. They tried to harmonize God's word with their teachings, but they could not succeed. God's word always magnifies Jesus Christ. It's not the word of all teachers that brought salvations to the Colossians. It was the word of truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? This same word gives us life and sustains us and strengthens us. First Peter 22, first Peter 1, 22, and then all the way to chapter two, verse three, first Peter 1, 22, Read it up to chapter 2, verse 3. It says, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure, uh, pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. It says in verse 24, 1 Peter uh, 1, uh, 24, it says, for all flesh is grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. Uh, the grass withereth, the flower thereof falleth away, but the word of the Lord endure forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile, and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If God has been good to you, text is saying, be good to somebody else. Amen. Um, dwell in you richly. Dwell means fill at home. Let the word do you love God's word? Let it dwell in you richly. If we have experienced the grace of, and the peace of Christ, then the word of Christ we feel at home in our hearts. We will discover how rich the word is to us. Amen, somebody? So, we must let the word of God dwell in us in our wisdom but we must teach and admonish one another. Amen? In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. The psalms and hymns, notice the, 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 the saved sing to themselves and other folk. Amen, somebody? Right? All right? So, so it is so good to have the grace of God in your hearts and have it in your hearts to the Lord. Verse 17, I told you we were going to get to 17. Thank you, Jesus. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. In modern society, we pay little attention to names, but the ancient world held a man's name to be of the utmost importance. Often during the Old Testament day, days, God changed a person's name because of some important experience or some new development. Uh, a Christian, we bear the name of Christ. The word Christian is found only three times in the entire New Testament. Acts 11, 26, if you're writing it down. Acts 26, 28, 1 Peter 4, 16. Only found three times in the entire New Testament. The name was given originally as a term of contempt, but gradually it became a name of honor. The name of Christ then, it means identification. We belong to Jesus Christ, right? And it is also by his authority, by his grace, that we are authorized to get these things that we put on from him. Long suffering, meekness, 
forbearance. <laughs> we only get that. We only were able to make the withdrawal because we belong, because we identify with him. Amen. I'm closing out. Time is well spent. And it says, don't do things for personal gain. Do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And give thanks for being able to God and the Father by him. We ought to be motivated. Since we are united with Christ through the indwelling Holy Spirit, we have all the resources we need for holy living. But we must be spiritually motivated because we have experienced the grace of Christ. We want to live for him. Because we have enjoyed the peace of Christ, we want to obey him. We have been enriched by the word of Christ and emboldened by the name of Christ. Therefore, we want to honor and glorify him. Amen, somebody. Amen. We have went over our text, got down to 17. Listen, don't forget, take text, text the number, text, text HGMBC to 54244. Join our church app so we can get the word of God out to you. Share this on your pages. Holy Grove members, start sharing right now. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for allowing us to have this time together. I ask that you bless all of those that hear me now. Bless those that will hear. Oh God, strengthen us in such a mighty way. We thank you now, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done and all that you're getting ready to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll see you soon. God bless you all.